Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this is yet another video on one thing in PyQt5. So PyQt5, as you may already know, is a Python graphical user interface library. I have tons of videos on this library covering different elements and different widgets in this library. So I've covered before the Q table widget as well as the Q tree widget to name a few. And this video is specifically about the PyQt5 Q tab widget. So without further ado, let's get started. So as you can see here, there is an already running application with PyQt5. So this is a very simple, very, you know, minimal looking graphical user interface that I have already built. The target of our video, like I said before, is the tab widget. So the tab widget looks like this. There are two different tabs and we can see that each tab has a different background color. So here this has like a pinkish sort of background color. This one has a sort of yellowish greenish type of background color and there are different types of buttons that will perform different actions related to this tab so here we can see actually if we check our run here we can see that every time i was changing the tab so tab one versus tab two it was telling us which tab it was changed to based on a certain index so in python in pyqt5 the tabs are indexed starting at zero so now when I press this, tab was changed to zero versus when I press this, tab was changed to one. So this is one feature that we'll be coding today, as well as other types of things related to the tab widget, uh, creating it, obviously. Another thing that we have is this change text button that has enabled us to change the text automatically to first tab and second tab without having to really do anything on screen. Another thing is the insert tab which added a new tab here and it is the third tab and now we can see it has an index of two. So they are indexed at zero, one and two. And finally, we have the remove tab, which is coded to actually remove the one at index number one. Now, how was this tab created? How were these buttons created? How were these actions performed? This is what this video is all about. So I'm going to show you how to create this tab, create this tab widget and style maybe the background colors for each tab as well as code the different functionalities for these buttons to enable us to have so many operations with these tabs. So let's see, how does this really work? So I'm just gonna exit the app right now and show you what we have. So let's for now look at the designer. So this is the Qt designer software. It is part of the PyQt5 tools. So a Qt PyQt5 tools, yes. So. Um, I have another video specifically for how to install and set up the PyQt5 library as well as the Qt Designer and where to sort of find it and make it work. It's a very short video, so feel free to refer to that if you're completely new to PyQt5. Also, if you want more beginner tutorials, I have those as well since this is a more specific and dedicated video to one sort of element or one widget in PyQt5. All right, so this is designer. This is my graphical user interface. So how do we really create this tab widget? So I'm just going to create a new um, dialog without buttons right here, just to sort of show you how this works. And I'm just gonna make it bigger. And what you need to do really is scroll down here where you have containers and you can find that there is a thing here called tab widget. So there's plenty of other types of widgets or containers for widgets. The tab widget, what it does is it's a widget and what it does is it contains other widgets within it. So I can drag other things into this tab widget. I can say I can put a bu button in tab one, um, a tool button, a radio button, and then I can go to tab two and there's obviously nothing there. I can just get a checkbox and a radio button. So that's really how this works. So that's really how you create this Q tab widget. Now, if you want to style it, what you can do is here, you click on the widget itself. So not the bigger tab widget, the widget itself. Then you right click and you can change the style sheet and you can specify a background color. You can add all other sorts of styles, obviously, but this is just for the sake of demonstration that you can style each widget separately. And it will help us differentiate between the two widgets and the two tabs when we're running our result of the tutorial and trying to see exactly which tab we're currently at. So that's it for creating the tab. The other thing I did in the designer is I add three push buttons. So just like that, you can add a push button, although you maybe already know this. So for each button, I gave it a name. So an object name here, this one is called change. This one is called insert. 
and this one is called remove. The reason I gave it these names is because I need to use these names to refer to these buttons in the code whenever they're clicked to perform different operations. So that's it really for looking at the designer. Let's go back to PyCharm and look at the code and see exactly what's going on. Now, I do have to say that I am currently using PyCharm. However, in your case, you can use virtually any text editor you like for your preferred Python IDE or text editor, and this will all work the same. Now, another thing is that in my current file or my current directory, I have my Python file, so my tab widget.py, which is um, for my current tutorial. And I also have the tab tutorial.ui. So the .ui file is the file created from the PyQt file designer. I save a .ui file. It's actually an XML file behind the scenes. And I just must save it in the same directory as my Python file. So here I am, I'm inside my Python file. You can obviously see tons of code on the screen and you're probably like, what's going on? So this code is actually not related to the tab widget at all. If you've seen any of my other videos or if you have some experience with PyQt5, you may think that this is already quite familiar. So basically what we're doing, so we have a bunch of imports here. So I have to import this, I have to import the PyQt5 Qt widgets. From pyqt5.uic, I import load UI. So this is a function that I import. This function will enable me right here to actually load my UI file, my .uI file, which was created using the designer interface. And other things I imported are different Qt widgets, such as QDialog, the Q application, which will help me launch my application, the QTab widget, and the Q widget, which we will be using shortly in our code. So these are just our imports. Every interface or every page in the interface should have its own class. So here we have this Q dialog. It's a main window and it's just a class. You have the constructor and we are loading this UI. So this should be pretty standard and you should be quite familiar with it. Now to run this application, we create a Q application. We add our main window to a stack of widgets and then we can set a fixed height and width. So this is definitely optional and up to you. And then we just have to widget.show and then we just have to execute the application. So that's it for the existing code. Now running this would enable us to actually see the graphical user interface, but nothing would really happen upon clicking the buttons or changing the tab because we haven't coded that yet. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to code functionalities for every single button. But the first thing we're going to do right before that is code the fact that whenever I change a tab, I want to print which index I change the tab to. So let's see, I can call self.tabWidget and I'm calling it tab widget because here in Qt Designer actually, it's called, oh, this is widget, but the whole thing is called tab widget. So keep that in mind. So self.tabWidget.currentChange.connect. So once the current tab is changed, I want to connect to a function called self.tabChange, which is a function that we're gonna write ourselves. So set the so define tab change. And then what we're gonna do here is simply we're going to print something. We're gonna print tab was change to, and then we're gonna give it our current index. So the current index, this is something we retrieve from our tab widget object, like that, and we get current index. And this is a built-in function for this object. And now if I run it. And I change the tab, we can see tab was changed to one, and then now tab was changed to zero. So now I've successfully coded the fact that whenever I change a tab, I can print a line to the command line and tell us which tab it was changed to. Now the next thing obviously is we're gonna code functionalities for these different buttons. So the first button is the change text button and it's called change. So what I would do is self dot change dot clicked dot connect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it to a function called tab change. Uh, no, not tab change. So uh, change tab. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define change tab. And this is how we're going to define it. We want to change the text. So actually, let's make maybe rename this to change tab text here. So we want to change the text. The way we can do that is simply again call self.tabWidget.setTabText and here we need to specify two things. We need to specify first the index of the tab we're going to change as well as the new name. So I want to call this first 
first uh, tab. Okay. And then I can do this again for the second tab. So this is here manual. We're doing this like through the code. Another thing you can do is maybe have a text box where the user themselves can change the tab name. And this way, you'd have a sort of more interactive application. But mainly here, I'm just trying to show you the functionalities and the functions that come with this tab widget object and less about the other graphical user interface elements that Pi 5 provides you. So now if I run it and I press change text, we can see first tab and second tab. So the tabs were changed and this whole printing thing here is still going and it's still working. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to do self.insert. So we're going to use the insert button, which we have named insert right here, to insert a new tab. So if it's clicked, we want to connect to self.insert tab. And now we're going to write a new function, insert tab. And what this function is going to do is it's going to enable us to add a new tab. So self.tabwidget.insert. Add tab, so this is very straightforward. The first thing you need to provide is an actual queue widget object, so a queue widget. In our case, it will be empty. And then, okay, this should be a capital W. And then what we're also gonna do is gonna give this tab a name. So we're just gonna call it new tab and save this. So now if I run it and I press on insert tab, we can see that we have a brand new tab that just showed up. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, and the final thing we're gonna do is actually code the functionality for this button. So this remove tab thing right here. So how am I going to code this for the remove tab? Simply the same thing we've been doing is I'm just going to self.remove.click.connect and then I'm gonna add a self.remove tab. And this function, I personally want to remove the middle tab, the one at index one, so here's what I can do. I can say self.tabwidget.remove tab. And I'm just going to say I want to remove the one at index 1. Or I can even make it the one at index 0. So this is definitely like up to you. You can have a more interactive way of maybe letting the user specify which tab they want to remove. And now if I run it and I press remove tab, I you can see I removed this tab and I can insert a new one and change the text and so on. So you can see this one was actually changed the first tab, even though it should be second tab. Um, this is because this one was actually moved to the index number one, uh, index number zero actually, and this one is now at index number one. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. It's a sort of simple tutorial about one widget in PyQD5, that being the Q tab widget. I hope this was useful and I hope that you now know how to incorporate this Q tab widget into your PyQD5 desktop applications. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, see you in the next video. Thank you so much and bye bye.